Hey, Nicole, did you do that quiz I sent you about getting sorted into the Hogwarts house? Yep. It says I am in Gryffindor because I am strong and courageous and never fail to rise to a challenge. Ooh. What'd you get? Um, it says I'm a Samantha. I'm sexy, sassy, and fiercely independent. Uh, my favorite drink and activity are both sex on the beach. Uh, Nick, I don't think that's your Hogwarts house. I think you took a quiz to tell you which Sex in the City character you are. Oh. Um. Well, let's get into how to play the game. Villains have infiltrated Hogwarts. Playing as either Harry, Ron, Hermione, or Neville, it's your job to stop them before they take over the school. The board is set up with your locations cards, villain stack, and the dark arts stack on the left side of the board. This is where combat will also take place once an active villain reveals themselves. The right side of the board is where the Hogwarts stack plays out. This operates as a sort of store where you can spend influence tokens. Players start out with a player card, which features a health tracker and spots the store attack tokens and influence tokens. Players are also given a starting deck, which has spells and helpful cards specific to their characters. Gameplay starts with revealing dark arts events. Look at the location card. That will tell you how many dark arts cards to flip over. Immediately flip a card and deal with the effects of the card. Keep an eye on the villain control tokens. Each time a location reaches its maximum controlled token, that location is placed to the side and a new location appears. If the villains control all locations, the game is lost. The next step is to flip over the villain card and the villain ability. These will either be immediate or have to be triggered. Next comes the player's turn. Players start by drawing five cards from their draw pile. They then can do any or all of three actions. They can play cards to either get resources or perform actions like attack or gain health. They can spend attack tokens to damage enemies, or players can spend influence tokens to buy cards from the Hogwarts deck. If they choose to buy cards, these cards cannot be played immediately and instead go straight to the discard pile. Once all actions have been taken, the player discards their hand and their resources and draws another five cards. The next player then gets one chance to act. The game is won once all the villains are defeated. This is done by accruing enough attack tokens to take down the villain's health meter. Six hearts will require six attack tokens. After a villain is defeated, the next villain is revealed until they are all defeated. Villains can also stun a player by bringing the player's health down to zero. The player's health will be restored on the next round, as stunning players will not cause them to lose the game. The game is only lost when villains have collected all necessary villain control tokens. Those are the basics of playing Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. In the base game, there are seven total games that can be played, each one reflected a different year in the Harry Potter timeline. Each game also comes with additional rules that make the game a bit more challenging as player skill progresses. We have just demonstrated a basic way to play, but for more in-depth rules and strategy, consult your player's manual.